Hello and welcome to a GTA 3 tutorial. In this guide I will show you what you need to prepare before attempting any GTA 3 speedrun. I'll explain useful programs, settings, terminology and showcase and explain glitches that are used in the speedruns. You won't need much to speedrun GTA 3. Uh, you'll obviously need the unmodified game, which you can obtain from Steam Shop. And something to record with, for example good old OBS. Or even recording your monitor with your phone or camera I can do, as long as it's possible to tell what is going on on the screen. What you need to make sure of is to not cover the game too much, especially the loading bar at the bottom of the screen. And also make sure the footage does not miss too much of the gameplay. For example, a video that doesn't show even 40 seconds of the game w could be considered unverifiable. PC version is the fastest version of the game out there and the version on Steam does not need any downgrades. No downgraders or some patches are needed in order to optimally run the game. Technically you don't really need anything more than that, however there are some programs that can make your life just a little bit easier. Uh, all the applications I'll mention can be found on speedrun.com, uh, in resources tab or on the games forum. There is only one modification that is allowed on leaderboards and that is the black cars fix. Steam version of the game has this bug that makes car dark for some reason. It's not necessary but the black cars do look weird. You can simply fix this by downloading the particles file and putting it in the models folder in the game's files. If you are playing with more than one monitor or playing with the game windowed, a cursor lock program will be a necessity. You need to lock your cursor inside the game's window because the game doesn't do it by itself, which results in the game losing focus and you losing control over it. I personally use Cursor Jail uh, made by Lightnator. It's a simple program, whenever you have a window focused, press numpad plus to keep the cursor within it. Even if you have two monitors, I would advise using a windower for the game as older games don't really like multiple monitors. It just makes it easier to alt up and restart the game. There are many windowers out there, but DXWND is the most popular amongst 3D era speedrunners, which is what I also recommend. Don't use the latest version of this, but rather the one linked in the description, because the newer ones don't tend to work with uh, GTA 3. Once you open DXWND, click on options and check export mode. After that, right click on the empty space below and then select add. Now name your game and link your GTA 3 exe file to path and launch bars. Then set your resolution. Next thing you wanna do is to go to the video tab and select model window style. Without it you would have frame around uh, your game which would make you actually resize the game's uh, window when you lock your cursor and for example try to shoot, uh, shoot around. Now go to the I.O. tab and check fix buffered I.O. after win, uh, win 98. This should slightly increase your loading times. However, you can get the same effect with RAM disk, so you don't need that if you have the game on a RAM disk. It's not necessary to have a timer shot on the screen, as the leaderboard uses real-time attack timing method to count the time. But if you want to track your progress, then there are many timers to choose from, for instance W split or Life split, the latter being the most popular among all speedrunners, not just GTA speedrunners. It has tons of options to configure, uh, I'm not going to explain them, there are many tutorials about that on YouTube already, but I am going to explain how splits work for all GTA 3 categories in general. It's better to split on mission starts rather than mission ends, so that the time life split displays is correct, because there are many missions that end at different times regardless of your position. Uh, the best example of this kind of mission is Evidence Dash or Smackdown. Both end at different places in Staunton, and both happen to go to Donald Love for the next mission in current route. Now, some people use segment splits, meaning that they split after a couple of missions, some people split for every mission, and some people don't have splits at all and just have timer only. I personally have combination of the first two, I split for most of the missions, but other missions are combined into one split, so I maintain my, my splits real, as real as possible. 
talk about splitting. Uh, there is an auto splitter already built in LightSplit. You can choose whether you want to split the admission pass or admission start. It also splits for uh, run start and for the run's end. It can also uh, reset uh, your timer when, start when, when starting over. Uh, however, since there are dupes in the speedruns, that means some missions will be started twice, and that means auto splitting for missions for mission start isn't really feasible. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I do not have splits for every mission, because some missions are uh, on some kind of timer. Therefore, no matter how well would you do on that kind of mission, you won't be faster nor slower. A great example of that is Drive Misty for me. Uh, I advise creating splits that do not include missions that are on timer, because they won't tell you if you're actually faster or slower. This applies for all categories, not just any percent. I used any percent uh, as an example in this case. All mission uh, icons for all missions are on speedrun.com in the resources tab to download. Another useful program is 100% checklist made by Lightnator. It is useful for all missions and especially 100% categories. Super easy to use, boot it up, choose GTA 3 and it will tell you what's the progress of your game. You can use it to see what you're missing in your hand run. And last but not least isn't really a program but a website made by Ethan called uh, eggamescom slash GTA where you can view tons of different stuff related to all GTAs, uh, not just GTA 3. Ethan did God's work with this one. The first thing you might notice when you start the game is the invisible menu that happens when you have too many FPS in the menu. It's still there, you just can't see it. Right now I don't have enough FPS to make it completely transparent, but you can see that it, fade, that it fades when I'm using it. So what you can do is start the game by selecting top options in the menu. Uh, the game will then cap to 30 FPS after it loads. But in exchange you won't be able to change uh, in-game resolution. So for that you, you need an external FPS limiter. So the first setting, controller setup, redefine controls. Here we'll set actions to your preferable buttons. All of buttons are personal preference except for look behind and submission action. Uh, those have to be set to the same key because otherwise you would not be able to hold submissions ou outside the vehicles. I strongly suggest to set this action to a key which you can hold for long amounts of time and the one that does not interfere with any other in-game action nor is affected by keyboard ghosting. For me that is sec second extra mouse button. It's always directly under my, under my thumb and is easy to access. The other thing I would advise is having next and previous weapons set to Q and D to scroll better through weapons as mouse scrolls can be inconsistent. But if you have a proper mouse and have enough scrolling skill, then I guess you don't need that. Also, suggest to change your dodo up and down buttons as by default they are in kinda uncomfortable spots. At least in my opinion, I set them to arrow keys. And the last worth to mention uh, thing is camera change button. In speedruns you're gonna be spamming this key a lot, so change it to some comfy key you can press a lot. And now mouse settings are mostly personal preference, but if the in-game sensitivity is lower, then the easier for you it will be to aim. Because when in-game sensitivity is higher, then the reticle will start jumping and will make sniping people almost impossible. Audio setup, there is nothing important there, just keep the game loud enough so you can easily tell what, what vehicle is approaching and from where, judging by the engine sound. Display setup, uh, brightness, it's nice to have it maxed out because the whole game is kinda dim. Draw distance, not really important, um, frame sync, irrelevant. Frame limiter must be on no matter what, as the rule states. Uh, trails make the game look horrible, so they should be off. Um, widescreen should be off also because, it's bro it, because it is broken. It makes aiming with weapons uh, worse because bullets don't actually go where the reticle is. And screen resolution should be matched at the resolution of your monitor or game window as close as possible. Player skin is personal preference. I'm just gonna say that you cannot have your own custom skin nor custom mp3 files in your game radio because they do weird stuff to the game. In GTA 3 you can almost infinitely sprint simply by just stopping the sprint rather than holding it. 
When you want to start sprinting, hold sprint for a 1 second and only then start tapping. The most important glitch in GTA 3 is obtaining on mission 0 rampage, which we use to make missions and or submissions also go on mission 0. Because when a rampage fails, the game will try to set the on mission flag to 0 once again. Doesn't matter if the flag is already at 0 or at 1. We use that to do missions and set up insta passes in all main categories. It's baby easy, you already have set the necessary control settings. So start holding the submission button, get out and simply walk into a rampage. Once it triggers, release the submission button and you have on mission zero rampage. Vigilante ended instantly because I was outside of the cop car when I let go of the button. Now you can start missions or submissions which we which will make the on-mission on flag go 1. However, you cannot start another rampage while on a rampage, regardless of, of the flag. You can see when you're on mission 1 or 0 by looking at the map and seeing mission markers or safe house markers, like in this example, disappear. So if I want to have this vigilante on mission 0, I have to wait for the rampage to expire or complete it and then submission will be on mission 0. Of course, this applies to other missions and submissions. However, completing Rampage now is way more difficult uh, than usual because the game won't spawn the pedestrians you need to kill due to mission cleanup script that runs when you either stop, fail or complete submission or mission. Dying on, on mission 0 mission or submission doesn't fail it because the game thinks you're not on a mission. But dying on, on mission 0 Rampage will fail the Rampage. When you fail a rampage in GTA 3, it gets transferred to another location. You can remotely start rampages by recording their locations with the replays and then activating the replay. As I said earlier, in GTA 3, once you fail a rampage, it goes to the alternative location, meaning you have to re-record the replay if you want to use it again. Remember that your replay has to be at least uh, 7 frames long. Otherwise, there is a chance you won't pick that rampage up due to the cycle that is in the game. Because only every sixth frame uh, the game checks if you're standing on some pickable thing. That applies to all pickable objects, not only rampages. So use something to be on mission 1, for example Vigilante. Stand on top of the rampage and record it by pressing F3, F1. Wait at least these 7 frames and press F2 to record. You can also use F1 replay, which is around 40 seconds of last gameplay to start the rampage. It's sometimes used in runs. Once you end an F3 replay, F1 replay will start from the moment you stopped a uh, 3 replay. So now I can pick that rampage up from whatever place on the map. Just press F3 and there you have it. You can pick up other things with uh, replays, for example bribe stars. Unlike in GTA Vice City, where it's only limited to health and armor pickups when on a rampage. Obtaining an on mission 0 rampage with replays works exactly the same like without them. Hold the submission button, play the replay, and release the button. To achieve a mega jump, you have to be moving and have two animations blending. The first one can be jumping or punching and the second one must be jumping animation. Then quickly play a replay. So here's how to mega jump. First, you have to be moving in any direction. And now for jump mega jump, jump and pay attention to when Claude will touch the ground, because as soon as you touch the ground, you're going to want to jump again and play F1 replay really fast. Just like that. I wouldn't advise looking specifically at Claude's feet, but at his general position and posture. Just jump around to get the hang of this. Jump Mega Jump is also easier to perform after sprinting than Punch Mega Jump, because you can release Sprint right after the first jump, and it's already enough to not mini jump. The Shoreside Hospital is the best place to practice your Mega Jumps, because there are many walls on which you can stop. Mega Jumping off hills also works, because you lose enough of horizontal speed. I think punch mega jump is a bit easier to pull off as the timing isn't that tight, but it doesn't mean you should just do punch mega jumps at all times. It's the best that you know how to reliably pull off both mega jumps. Press left mouse button and once again jump and play F1 replay really fast. As long as you have punching or shooting animation going, it's fine. 
doesn't really matter doesn't really matter if you do it super early or super late when you do have a weapon remember to not mega jump too early when you just started walking because then you're more likely going to mini jump and kill yourself remember that mini jump because it's actually useful for some miscellaneous categories the thing about uh, mega jumping with weapons is that even though you're standing in one place as long as you're holding a directional key you still can mega jump Aiming your mega jumps is baby easy though. Align Claude's head to wherever you want to mega jump and that's it. Works with both type of, types of mega jump and there is no need for crosshair, so you can do it without weapons. You have to know how to aim mega jumps for certain jumps in speedruns, for example the Portland to Staunton jump or chaining mega jumps on Blowfish. Talk about chaining mega jumps. In between every mega jump you have to release the directional key you've been holding to mega jump. Most of the time it's the W key, so let it go and you can mega jump again. Worth mentioning is that you don't have to fully stop between mega jumps. You can hold for example D after the mega jump, release W for a brief moment and hold it again to mega jump forward. This way you don't need to wait until Claude stops and starts walking again, because he keeps his momentum. However, if you have a weapon in your hand, you don't have to do that. You can mega jump without releasing the key. That applies to both jump and punch mega jumps. When you have the invincibility glitch, you can jump, you can chain mega jumps way more efficiently because you don't have to lose the speed to not die since you're immortal. To do so, jump and mega jump and once you touch the ground, jump again and quickly play your replay to mega jump once again. You can repeat that indefinitely, but the timing is quite tight and requires fast inputs. To reliably perform mega jumps, and especially chained mega jumps, you need to have a comfy setup. I myself am a space printer, so I have b jump bound to shift, which makes it kind of hard to quickly reach from shift to F1 key, so I bound jump to another key, which is tilde. It makes it way easier to mega jump. Additionally, my replay buttons are rebound from F keys to 1, 2 and 3 via auto hotkey program, which in my opinion is less important. It's just that back in the day when I was starting out, my functional keys didn't used to work because they were broken so I had to rebound them and I kinda stayed with that setup. Yes, you can rebind keys with third party programs as long as one key does one and only one action. Take the time and find the setup that works for you the best. It's possible to change direction of your mega jump in the middle of it. Do the mega jump as usual, but don't cancel the replay right away. Instead, start holding another directional key and only then cancel the replay. And now for less useful information, you can mega jump in any direction you want. You can mega jump forwards, backwards, sidewards or diagonally. You can use that to flex. Both types of mega jumps have pros and cons. Jump mega jump is easier to pull off after you stop sprinting and allows you to mega jump with the sniper unlike punch mega jump because sniper doesn't have an animation for firing. In return it takes more space to perform and is more time consuming when you start walking. The upsides of punch mega jump are that it takes less space and time to perform, thus this method allows you to consistently mini jump, which is actually useful for current all hidden packages route. And the downside is, well, mini jumps. Flying the dodo is one big glitch. Rockstar did not intend you to fly this thing at all. But we love glitches and nobody loves Rockstar, so we abuse it as much as we can in speedruns. To lift off, start holding a button that corresponds to nose down. For short, I'll just call it down, and for nose up, up. While driving and holding down, your nose will start scratching the surface. That means you can release down. If you keep holding down, you can get a weird pixel block and completely stop, so avoid that. What's also important is that you do not need to see the scratches under the, under the plane to take off. You can release down earlier. Most of the time you're going, be, you're going to be taking off without the scratches appearing. So now while in midair, Dodo just keeps going up, losing momentum, which results in a crash. So you have to counter that by repeatedly pressing down midair. The more you press it, the lower you'll go, and the more speed you'll gain. Trying to use W or S when midair doesn't work. You won't slow down when holding S, and you won't speed up when holding W. To turn left and right, you have to use A and D. Remember that you still have to be tapping down. Usually, to, effic to efficiently turn, 
you have to dive to gain speed. Otherwise you will flip due to lack of speed uh, which Dodo loses when turning without diving. Keep in mind that you can't hold A or D for longer amounts of time. You need to keep tapping them, because if you hold, Dodo will rapidly turn and you'll most likely flip. The same applies for up and down. Sometimes you just need to tap faster or slower. Dodo is very sensitive when flying. Now, to land your Dodo safely, slow down by tapping up and gain altitude. Once you lose speed and start falling down, you're gonna want to keep Dodo parallel to the ground using down and up. Do not overdo the landing because you just might land on your tail and bounce off and flip. In this example I was extremely lucky to get this kind of bounce that kept me on the ground. I should have flipped about 100 times. Pay, pay attention to how I kept holding down and nothing happened to Dodo's position. The other way to land is to crash onto the ground. It is done only sometimes, usually when you're abandoning your Dodo, because Dodo, like any other vehicle in the game, has health points and it can explode. And the last way to land is like an actual plane. Fly low enough to touch the ground and hold down, S and handbrake. Yes, Dodo does have a fu fully functional handbrake, like any other land vehicle. This method is fast and doesn't damage the Dodo, but requires a lot of space. Good example of that landing is when you land next to Donald Love, but be mindful of vehicles driving on the road there. You have to keep changing camera to despawn them. That's it for the dry theory. Flying the Dodo is like riding a bike. It's hard to grasp it at the beginning, but once you get a hang of it, it will become your second nature and you will never forget how to do it. It takes a lot of time to land your first Dodo bait. For me, it took like a week to do, so don't give up and keep practicing. You can quickly pause and unpause the game by moving your mouse over the half of the game while in-game, holding W and Sprint and simply pressing Escape. You can do the same in cars, except instead of W and Sprint, hold just W. This allows you to instantly trigger markers or stop criminals on Vigilante and more. Doing this drops all your inputs, so you have to start pressing again whatever you are pressing. Man dipping in GTA 3 is really hard. It requires very precise timing and is inconsistent because there are cycles for both mission and rampage. You need to pick up a rampage for a replay before you trigger a mission, but the rampage needs to activate after you trigger the mission. It is generally good to have a reference po point rather than trying to whiff it every time. I don't advise using man tube routes unless you're going for world record. Obtaining 30k ammo isn't the easiest things to do. You need to make the rampage end in a replay. There are a few ways of getting 30k ammo. First one is completing the rampage in a replay. It applies purely for rampages in which you need to destroy cars. Second one, you spam the shit out of your F3 button when the rampage is about to end. Third one is to start the replay and prepare yourself to cancel it and start it as soon as you can after it ends. So it's essentially F3, wait a little and spam F1, F3, F1, F3. Not many people use this method, so I can't tell if it works good or not. Fourth is to spam F3, F1 over and over, like if you are preventing the falling animation from playing. I use it personally and it mostly works only with replays from another island. It's fast and somewhat reliable. Fifth one doesn't require replays. Start the rampage on mission zero, go to safe house, save and reload. In general, it's better to have the replay from another island, because it's easier to buffer replays, but it's not always possible in speedruns. Having ticked uh, fixed buffered IO in DXW and D's settings really helps with the loading times here. Weather skip is not a crucial part of the game, but at the same time isn't hard to perform. It's more of remembering weather cycle throughout the run. If you are new to speedrunning GTA 3, I'd say leave this part of the tutorial and come back when you're more inexperienced. The weather cycle is fixed and is always the same from the start and is tied to the in-game time, meaning that the current weather won't change until the in-game hour advances. There are four types of weather, sunny, cloudy, rainy and foggy. As you can imagine, we want to avoid rain at all times, and only sometimes foggy and cloudy. For example, on a drop in the ocean, because that makes it hard to drive the boat. And maybe avoid foggy on Dodo bait. As the forum thread says, there are a few missions that can halt the weather cycle.
There are two similar ways of skipping weather. The first one is to play is to play the F3 replay at 59th minute of the in-game hour, and then play as many F1 replays as hours of weather you want skipped within that 59th minute. If you paid attention while watching this tutorial, you'll know that every time you play a replay, the in-game minute starts counting over, so that means you can indefinitely sk skip weather. The effect of this method will apply as soon as the hour advances. So according to the forum post, the first rain of the playthrough is supposed to happen in 18 minutes, but with the weather skip you can make it rain now. The other way is to play a free replay on 59th minute of the hour. Wait until the hour passes and within 20-ish seconds play the, play the F1 replays. The effect will then apply on the next hour. If you need to use an F1 replay but, want, but don't want to skip weather anymore, play an F3 replay beforehand. That will allow you to not skip the, ra the weather. Immortal Glitch, as the name says it, makes you all proof and makes you not take damage from anything. And by anything, I do mean anything. So if you land in the water you just softlock. And yes, that does mean you can survive mega jumps on flat surfaces. To obtain the glitch, you need to interrupt the getting busted in a vehicle animation, because during that animation you're invincible. To do that, have a cop chasing you. It's the best that you have one star of wanted level, because the cop, the cop just chases you instead of shoots you. Damage the car until it's on fire. It takes 5 seconds for it to explode, so wait around 4 seconds. Bump the cop next to the door before the car explodes and try to get in. If done successfully, Cloud will get in the car, the cop will be aiming his gun at him and the car will explode, giving control back. You can look at the in-game time for reference and also keep the door closed so the time frame of getting busted is bigger. Keep in mind that if you get in a car without despawning the dead cop that tried to bust you, you will get instantly busted. You will lose this glitch whenever you lose control over a cloud or mission cleanup script place. That was it for this tutorial. You now know the essentials of GTA 3 setup, settings and glitches and are ready to learn any category. Good luck, good skill and have fun.